Good morning uh, to you, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, fellow members of Tacoma New Life Church. Today is Friday, August 7th, and we are on uh, the latest, we are on day two of the latest Bible reading plan. Uh, what does it mean to worship? You know, worship is, is so important for our Christian lives. It is so essential to our well-being, our, our growth, and our maturity as followers of Christ. And just in case you missed it yesterday, uh, worship is ascribing unspeakable value and displaying substantial love to something. Right? Worship is and reflects the posture of our hearts. And so whatever is seated on the throne of our hearts, we will worship. Right? We give that worship, whatever that might be. And hopefully for you, the, the person seated there in your heart, on the throne of your heart, is none other than God. You see, this morning we are, we are poised with the question, why do we worship? Why do we worship? Uh, the answer is simple, right? The reason why we worship is because God said so, right? It's literally dedicated to the first five commandments right those are all true but that's not why we worship right we don't we don't just worship because that's what god said right it's like a, it's not a punishment to us right we, we worship god we are adamant and conscious about worshiping god because god is worthy right we worship him because he is worthy you see, in Revelation chapter 4, verses 8 to 11, it says, And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within, and day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. You know, recently we started singing a song of worship in our second service uh, that is based out of this particular scripture. And the name of that song is, You Are Worthy of It All. And it's a song with uh, the, that one line that goes, All the elders cast their crowns before the lamb and sing and then the chorus rings out you are worthy of it all right you are worthy of it all and then it ends with because you deserve the glory you see we we worship God why right? we should want to give God worship because he is simply worthy of it all and he deserves all the glory we can ascribe to him right he deserves all the glory that we could ever offer to him you see we worship God because everything that has breath was created to give him glory right to give him praise and to give him worship right and another reason why we worship God is because it is in response to who God is and even with that there are levels as to how we worship God for who He is. You see, we worship God for who He is in light of the many things that you've heard, the many things that you have read and what has been said of God. And we obviously come to these convictions and these conclusions through Scripture. We're not pulling them out of thin air, right? What is said in Scripture, right, that's how we come to these conclusions but we also come to these conclusions conclusions and these understandings in light of testimonies like, like don't you hear a testimony about what 
God has done or is doing in someone's life. And in turn go, man, God, you are so good. Wow. Right? Doesn't that make you want to give him worship? Right? Not, not that like you, all of a sudden you just start singing a random song in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a worship service. But what that does, right, when you hear those good things, when you hear those great things about God, all of a sudden it just fixates the posture of your heart toward God, right? It causes your heart to be a more aligned, more fixated on who God is and in turn out of adoration. And you want to give Him glory. You want to give Him worship. You see, another way we worship God for who He is is because that's what we are experiencing with Him, right? It's coming from personal experience. And our relationship with God as, as it's moving, as it's progressing, as it is journeying along in our faith and maturing how we are getting to know God, that is going to influence how and why we worship God. And that's why it is so important for us, right? That's why it's so important for you and I to want to know Him more and more. Because, because quite frankly, we cannot worship Him for something He is not. Right? We cannot worship Him for something we do not know. right? And we can't worship Him for something we don't align with or believe. right? Like We can't worship God as if He is some sort of genie in a magic lamp waiting to be something, waiting to grant the wishes of our hearts or the desires of our hearts. Right? That's not how it works. You see, we cannot worship God as if He is some sort of fortune teller that we visit whenever we need some life direction or help making some sort of life cho choice. But up until this point, we've been neglecting Him. That's not worship. right? That's not how we go about worship. But here's the cool thing. Here's the great thing. Here's the encouraging thing about knowing God and getting to know God. God more and more and that's this our lives like your life my life they are full of opportunities to know him more right as long as you and I are walking this earth as long as you and I are are blessed with another day of life that is a living opportunity for us right you and I to get to know God more but as we are getting to know God more there are going to be some days when we experience something new, we have some sort of new revelation, some sort of new conviction. And then there will be days where it's simply just something that maybe we forgot about God. And God is reminding us of who He is. And there will be some days right, that will be reminders and affirmations about who God is. But knowing God is something that we will never, ever be able to fathom. And that's not a bad thing. Right? It's actually a good thing. Because God is revealing Himself to us. And He is continually revealing more of Himself to us. And because He sent His one and only living Son to live amongst us, and to die for us and to be victorious over the grave, He will never hide His face from us. So even though we will never be able to fathom who God is, that just means you and I, you and I have so much more to know, so much more to experience when it comes to God being the God of our lives. I'll wrap things up with this. In Psalms 98 uh, verses 1 to 3, it says, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arm have worked salvation for Him. The Lord has made known His salvation. He has revealed His righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered His steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. And so church, I leave you with this this morning. Let us take the question, why do we worship? 
and by the grace of God, man, let's transform that into this statement. This is why I worship, right? Let's take that question of why do we worship and let's turn it into a profound statement, a conviction saying this is why I worship. And as that grows and matures in your life and with your faith, would it become, would it expand? These are the reasons why I worship. Because of all that you are experiencing with God, right? Because this life, your life is a testimony of who God is. It's a testimony of what God has done in your life up until this point. But it is a continued testimony testifying about what God is currently doing in this season of your life. And so church, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you as you go forth worshiping our God who reigns forever and ever. Amen? Amen. May you go in peace.